Hi everyone. I'm Nicola Hamilton. I'm president of the RGD um, and I am here during the studio crawl to swing in and talk to some studio owners and design leaders in different parts of the country to talk a little bit about what the design industry and design community looks like where they work. Um, so join me as we head to Montreal and uh, meet a few folks for this part of the conversation. Vanda, do you want to kick us off and introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, my name is Vanda. I am the co-founder and creative director at Super Bonjour. We are about five years old. We're a bi-coastal studio um, split between Montreal and Vancouver uh, with Vienna Evoid all the way out in the West Coast. Um, we do mostly branding and creative direction and campaigns and direct photo and video and do a ton of strategy. Um, we're small, we're two. Uh, we've got a good network of freelancers, but we like to keep things, you know, small and agile and manageable. And uh, yeah, I guess we have a different sense of growth that way. Um, and we're excited to be here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for joining us. Ash, Mira, want to tell us a little bit about you and what you do? Yes. Hi, my name is Ash. I am Mira. Hope. Well, yeah, go ahead. Founders of our agency called Sysankyam. Uh, yeah, so I'm creative director. You are a brand strategist. I'm speaking for you, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, so Sysankyam has existed officially, officially since 2018. We've been working together since 2016 and slowly but surely growing um, our company. We're also a duo uh, with a network of freelancers similar to Super Bonjour. And we specialize in brand strategy, branding in general, creative strategy, and we really help businesses define who they are and we give them the tools to express that to the world. Mm -hmm. And we mostly work in the space of entertainment, arts and culture, and the tech. And one of the reasons why Sysankyam has been created is because we want to fill the void of normalizing people who look like us to enter this industry, because we believe that it's much needed. And uh, we're very loud about that. And that's one of our core um, missions and values. Yeah, and both studios are, are based in Montreal, or you're talking to us from Montreal. That's yes. correct. Great. Awesome. Okay, then let's start by just talking about what design, what the design community and design industry looks like in Montreal. If if I were to move there from Toronto tomorrow, what would I encounter? A lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of creatives, lots of yeah. agencies. Um, yeah, I know. I think it's super creative. It's super abundant. I think Montreal has a history of being a welcoming place for creative people and I you know everything's getting insanely expensive but I think that's still somewhat true there's still lots going on um to support creatives I do feel like there's more and more tiny little agencies like us which is kind of nice to see because it kind of helps with the balance of us between you know us versus the giants um I think there's also a bunch of different creative schools so there's people who come into this industry you know directly from a design program or people who are self-taught or people who went into photography and then switched or the other way around and so there's a lot of like pluridisciplinary cross-pollination cool collabs that are possible um what do you guys think no I I agree 100 percent with that I think Montreal is one of the most creative cities in the world. Like if you're an artist and you're looking for a place for inspiration or you just want to like network with other creatives, I think Montreal is the, is the best place to do that. Even like if you look at our architect architecture, you go to our these low random restaurants and you just see like how it's well designed and everything. Mm -hmm. And I think we're kind of blessed because it's just a, a big mixture of different cultures so that mixing of culture just kind of bleeds into the art and everything that we create. So um, if you're really looking for inspiration, I think Montreal is like, it's, it's a design city. Um, like, how do you feel about that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's like, agree with everything everyone has said. I think we're very 
even though we're in it, we're kind of like siloed, I find ourselves mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. we're, we're not necessarily tapped into the, the typical agency world or agency culture because we are um, kind of smaller and we're creating our own thing. Um, so we're, we're like, we're part of it, but we're slightly on the outskirts of it. And so we're tapped into our own creative network and our own creative community, which looks a lot different from the typical, you know, bigger, wider known agencies um, here in Montreal. Um, So yeah, I don't know Mm -hmm. what more to add to that, but yeah. I hear that. I think there's a really big scene of ad agencies, which is kind Mm -hmm. of its own thing. And they have their own communities and their own, you know, uh, I don't know, I guess graduate programs or internships or whatever they do. And then there's sort of a whole creative league that's not advertising people. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think it's pretty abundant on both sides, which is interesting. I don't know how much the two sides mix. I know we don't we don't really, we rarely have contact with the ad world, to be quite honest. Um, and then there's a thriving in-house design mm-hmm. scene in Montreal too, right? Like lots of corps that have in-house design teams. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say lots. Less? Okay, okay. I don't think that many. Yeah. I don't uh, know them. <laughs> no, I, like probably, probably is because the, those type of clients don't really reach out to us specifically but I, I I feel like most don't really see the value of that yet that's just me personally speaking usually you usually have like you know a social media person they expect that social media person to do literally everything, everything. <laughs> that's not your in-house creative team sorry to tell you <laughs> okay but, that's yeah. that's an interesting like piece of information if we're looking at how the industry looks across the country um you know in other parts of the country vancouver and toronto at least in-house is a huge huge part of yeah. industry um, yeah and so if that's a gap in montreal that's that's an interesting thing to just pay attention to yeah, I think it depends which sectors you're in. I think in um, in our retail industries, the bigger companies definitely have teams, you know, like the Aldo, I don't know, Dynamite, Ratemans, et cetera. Um, but a lot of smaller or different industries won't necessarily have that many people. They might have like a very, very lean studio of a couple of people. Whereas what we see with Vancouver, say, I don't know, Herschel, they have a full on studio they produce all their photo and video in house. Like they, it's a different situation where there are no, um, like there's there's no real like uh, creative, ag- um, not creative agencies, but like studios like Consula or Eloi don't really exist yeah. at West because the those talents are usually sort of holding full time jobs in house. Um, mm. And so for people like us, I think it's a different game to go and get gigs. Yeah. Whereas in Montreal, there is this understanding that if you have a brand and you need assets, then you hire people, right? You hire the right people, you build the right team. So that's, I think, more current here. Mm-hmm. That's so interesting. I wonder if some of that has to do with all of the sort of multi-talented creatives in Montreal too, right? Like if it's a culture of folks who have skills in photography and design and art, um, if maybe hiring hiring people makes more sense. Hmm. I think maybe we're less likely to accept those full time jobs. <laughs> you know, <laughs> job. Probably right. Probably. Artist culture. Montreal has such a sort of deep rooted artist culture, right? Like where you are working on so many projects, your own and paying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, Mira Ash, what's your sort of experience been with with sort of agency or in house like larger corporate design? Mm. well I don't know I kind of have a very like I want to say negative view of like the design the agency culture here but I kind of have like a very um I'm kind of like I was saying before like I do feel like here is very clicky it's very um if you went to a certain school if you fit a certain mold came from a certain background like um you know this is for you but if you outside of that like like you don't feel like you belong there you know and it's like kind of feel indirect sometimes and and that's the thing that pushed us to kind of create our own studio because we never felt like we that we belong in these certain communities I could say and 
yeah like so even even now like I feel like sometimes like we do some amazing work and and probably I'm this is just my ego who's speaking but sometimes I feel like you know we're doing such amazing work right here and like we don't have like people at bigger agencies here even or big higher ups in other agencies even like reach out to us but yet still we have people in the U.S. who work at these bigger agencies they reach out to us to even have conversations with us to be like curious with us you know like what's the what's that agency Alan the the one there we from in California I what's it called I forget the name I forgot his name but like you know just like I just feel like across the border we get more love I would say than here in Quebec and I just feel like it's because we don't fit that um traditional mold sometimes and yeah that's just yeah. my <laughs> I mean, what I'm hearing from both of you and from Vanda is that like there isn't a ton of overlap between the design community and the ad agency community, right? And like, um, what about like the design industry? So, I mean, your studios are both are both sort of two people at the core. Um, does that sort of scale up and down a bit? Do we see sort of five to ten person studios? You see twenty to thirty person studios? Do you sort of have the full breadth there? Yeah, I think so, right? I think there are a bunch of um, slightly bigger studios, more, more. Uh, I don't know if traditional is the right word, but, you know, they'll get a space and they'll have, a, you know, they'll set up and there'll be a bunch of people in their cute studio. And I think there's a lot of that, which is really nice also. I mean, good for them. That's great. Um, I think that, I, but I think that everyone has a different sense of, being an entrepreneur, like I always find it such a funny way to think of ourselves, but I guess, you know, the sooner we accept it, the better it works for us. But, yeah. you know, I, I think it's also a different sense of growth. Like some people really have these targets that are, I think like, oh, we're going to be 20 people by next year, or mm -hmm. we're going to generate X amount. And that's never really been our thing. We've, our goals are more like, oh, we're really going to nail this way of doing things, or we're going to really explore this type of creative, or I'd love to work with so-and-so, let's find a sweet opportunity, or I'd love to take a month off, can we pull it off? You know, like, those have been more of our growth objectives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it really depends. I think there is room for everyone, for sure. I mean, obviously, there's all kinds of, uh, you know, formulas of agencies here um I do wish we all talked more because I feel like everybody kind of just goes like oh so and so and so and so but I don't know how much we're all reaching out to like just connect there's maybe a sense of scarcity or a sense of like how much work is there for all of us or how much can we share which I hope is changing yeah um, yeah yeah yeah, I, 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 I definitely agree with you about wanting to connect more like that's mm. so important, especially for smaller agencies, because there are so many opportunities where you might have a certain skill uh, that we don't, for example, and we can collaborate and fill in that gap or even just you know, more like um, just information sharing as well. Um, super important in terms of pricing, things like that. Uh, I definitely don't have a scarcity mindset. I think there's so many opportunities out there. There's so much work out there for everyone. And I think that if we work together more, or if we collaborate more or just share or stay connected and, and, and whatnot, um, there's so much value that that can be shared between agencies and we can really kind of scale together and grow together. Mm -hmm. Personally, I don't necessarily want to scale up too big because I feel like that comes at a cost. It comes at a cost of compromising on the quality of the work at times, um, being kind of at the mercy of your clients and, you know, um, kind of being in this loop where, you have to compromise on creativity for the sake of a dollar. And I don't want to necessarily do that. I want to mm. stay boutique, you know, obviously eventually grow, you know, to a couple team team members, but stay boutique so that we can really um, maintain the level of quality and the integrity and 
the culture that we want within our agency and we don't have to compromise Mm -hmm. yeah like yeah that's something that me and Ash like came to our realization during the pandemic as well like because I I, during that time I was speaking with other people who work at bigger agencies and let me tell you 90% of them hate it they hate it they hate it they hate it and they hate it because of the crunch deadlines and like how Ash says like taking on work where like collectively they don't even want to do it but because it's such a high paying client you have no choice to do it right so there's a lot of things that you have to compromise and I remember I was speaking to someone and he was telling me he's like if you want to scale up to like this big agency who have like I don't know a thousand 1500 employees are you willing to compromise on xyz if you are then yeah but if you're someone who's really like no the process and everything you want it a certain way probably it makes sense that you just like you know max you have 50 people and you just kind of like operate very small but like you're still working with global clients so there's pros and cons to all of that but I think it's cool to be presented with those two type of realities because coming into this I never thought about like oh like you have to compromise on these type of work because even sometimes like there's one time we got a brief or we got a project that was done by a bigger agency, way bigger than us. And the client did not like the work that they did. And and we were so surprised that that agency presented this to the client. And it kind of looked like they kind of just sent their juniors to do it. And they're like, okay, just handle it, do whatever. And they just saw it like as a whatever project. But it's just like, I'm like, I, I would never feel comfortable doing that. Like just take it on a project, just be like, oh, how are juniors doing it? do whatever and wherever we took on the project and kind of flipped it over and did an amazing job but it's just to show you that I don't know that's something that we don't really want to do and it's cool to just kind of have those two realities and also another thing I'm going to say as well too um um I, I forgot where, where I was going with this but like I do think being in Montreal it's such a privilege especially when it comes to here in Canada I'm sorry for the other provinces but I and I'm just saying from our perspective because you know over the last two years you know we have been working with a lot of more international clients especially in the U.S. and one thing that they've been valuing a lot from being from Montreal is um, they value the two language that we speak Mm -hmm. and the diverse of culture so some of the clients that we've been working with, clients who have, they're from the U.S., but they, they're they thinking about going global. And that's something that I, I see recurring a lot. They're like, oh, I like the fact that you guys speak with two, two languages. I like the fact that you guys have, you know, people, you have Persian people or Jamaican people living in the same, you know, like they, they value that diverse of culture that's not really, it's kind of, it might be pre- present in other province, but I think the fact that we speak multiple language it's such a we're an international city yeah and uh, I feel like you know small studios like us who are in Montreal I think that's something that I feel like we have a little advantage of and I don't think a lot of us really realize that sometimes (laughs) don't forget that Montreal has a really deep deep history as being like an international design center right as far Mm. back as the 60s um and so there's a piece of that that I think still plays out globally Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, for sure. Yeah. Um, I'm so curious if there's any trends in the design industry or community that you're seeing sort of pop up. Are there things, they could be aesthetic trends, they could be sort of investments in in tools or in sectors. Mm, trends, trends. I see teaching becoming a big thing. Like okay. I mean, a big... Uh, um, I wouldn't say it. I don't. Yeah, you could call it a trend. Probably it's a trend or not. But I'm, I'm seeing that like a lot of studios are kind of like offering like almost like a school or some sort of learning component to their, to their thing where they're either training other studios about their specific process or, um, offering some sort of like, like one studio. What's that studio called? Um. Ooh, what are they offering? Uh, like they're basically offering like um, uh, courses to CEOs and co-founders to help help them. How do they think about branding or help them like 
um, develop their 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 expertise like when it comes to design branding. literacy almost yeah like almost yeah okay. to help them understand like okay how do you put your values into actions how you put your mission into actions that's and, amazing that's like, so good they're yeah. doing that yeah, yeah I, I i i seen a few studios started offering that so i was like hey okay over the last year or so so that's something in terms of a trend i've been noticing like design education for non-designers Basically. exactly yes okay it perfectly <laughs> I mean that's such a huge part of what we do is educating yeah. clients on yeah. why we are experts at this thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's so interesting Vanda what about you are you seeing anything I mean I don't know there's definitely a I think I guess a bit of a Montreal aesthetic I mean, more experimental than other provinces. Like I think Montreal historically has pulled out way cooler stuff than <laughs> elsewhere. And like, I'm, I always wonder what it is about design culture that be, designers feel more equipped to take risks than other parts of the country. I don't know, maybe because there's more of us. Like maybe yeah. there's just sort of like, you know, it's that, I, and yeah. I mean it, I don't mean it in a sense of like, oh, you got to hustle harder to like show off. I mean it more like at any given point, you can look around and learn from so many other creatives, right? It's like being yeah. in like a perpetual studio, right? Like, you know how in studio where, sure, you can learn a ton by yourself, of course. I always found that the one thing I got out of school that I thought I wouldn't, I didn't know how I would replicate on my own was to be able to learn from every other student in the class too, right? Like yeah. just to be able to like see what 20 other people have done with a similar challenge. Group crit. Group crit, right? Yeah. So I don't know, maybe just by seeing what everybody else is doing and seeing how everybody else is iterating and innovating, it might be more kind of just sets a culture or baseline that's more like, okay, okay. So the minute somebody kind of pushes the envelope, it's room for all of us. Yeah. So that's maybe a cool thing. I think if trend wise, one thing I'm seeing though, that maybe not, I don't know if it's enough of a trend, but I'm seeing a tendency towards is it's people switching around like really brilliant designers, graphic designers moving into photography, mm. which I find really great or like really great set designers that are slowly moving into direction. So that kind of like diversifying skill sets. Yeah, but it's it's like, you know, when you spend enough time in these studios and in these shoots and in these spaces, like you bring something to it and you start noticing that what you bring is a little bit different and that maybe you could, you know, pick up the camera or maybe you could be in a different position on the team to kind of help shape an idea differently or contribute differently. And I think it's really positive because I think it shows that we're coming out of this like, boy boys were men's world of direction which was a thing here for a really long time it's like every photographer and director was a guy and they had the click and the assistants are still mostly guys but it's starting to open up they're starting to be like a new generation of like hey man if you think you can do it come on in we'll build the team to support you and so I think that's really positive I love seeing that I want to see more of that for sure um and I think also people can practice here, maybe because of the lifestyle or the affordability. Like maybe we yeah. are able to like take on, you know, way more gigs with friends to experiment and try and try and do a bunch of different things. Like we, you know, when I came out of school, we had a magazine and worked so hard on it for years, but it wasn't paid. And I, I don't think that that's the right model. I'm not encouraging that. But I do see the privilege I had in being able to just me and my peers to just be able to practice and just do things and just keep honing our skills and learning from that. Well, and making stuff for yourself is so different than making stuff for a client, right? Like very few designers oh, yeah. get into this industry to push somebody else's business initiatives forward, right? Like we get into it because we were creative and this seemed like a path that might be sustainable. Mm speaking generally, but yeah. Um, all right, we are, we are running out of time. Um, I feel like I could talk to the three of you forever. Um, but let's maybe wrap this up with like a little bit of advice maybe for folks 
who are uh, finishing design school in Montreal or maybe hoping to make make the transition there. Um, or maybe for folks who are like thinking about opening a studio or going it on their own in your region. What you got? What comes to mind? I have something. Um, <laughs> business aspect. The business aspect. I'm a, okay. I think, it, I think it's very important. And although, although like, um, you know, you need to be an expert of accounting or, or all these things, like you're a creative person, you don't need to do that. But I do think just having a general um, idea of how the business work in terms of pricing, your accountant and all these things, I think it's extremely, 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 extremely important. Like we made so many mistakes because we weren't savvy on the business side of things and we had to learn, adapt very, very, very quickly. But um, I do think we, um, uh, my advice would to just, you know, either if you, um, if there's some sort of like events that's going on that that talks about any type of financial literacy of some sort in your industry, I will, I will, I will, I will do that, you know, yeah. try to pick other agencies, owners, their brains in terms of like, oh, like, how did you go about like, you know, pricing or anything like that, just to get those out the way, because as creative people, we try to avoid that. We don't like talking about money. We don't like talking about yeah. none of that stuff, but it's super important. Yeah, I mean, I can think of two RGD resources that are helpful, the Business of Graphic Design Handbook. Um, so our RGD handbook that sort of has contract templates and yeah. invoicing templates and talks about talks about the business side, the sort of logistics of the business side. And then the Creative Earners National Salary Survey, which outlines what, what people are charging and making um, across the country. Um, but are there other resources that were helpful to you, Mira, when you were sort of trying to, to sort that stuff out yourself? Um... I, I I follow I was following someone very um, powerful online. He doesn't put out as much content on YouTube no more, but Chris Do. I don't know if you ever heard of him before. Chris Do. He we uh, yeah yeah we did an interview with him once, and it was like mind boggling because it was like oh my god I learned so much. But like that's someone that like kind of opened our eyes in terms of like how to value ourselves and all that yeah. stuff. So that's a good resource. And you know, Christo in the future are doing a lot of hard work to make mm -hmm. the business stuff more accessible to creatives, for sure. Okay. Um, Ash, anything else that comes to mind for you? Um, what can I say? I guess starting out, if I'm putting myself in someone's shoes who's just starting out and wants to kind of go off on their own, uh, I think the sooner you uh, learn to um, disassociate, like, separate kind of the art artist the creative from the the business side of things and learn to not only create things because they look good or you know yes there's that 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 ego and that creativity that kind of drives the work that we do but it's also about what value are you going to provide it's not just about doing things that look cool and that's how we started out we started out just wanting to be like oh we want to be known as people who do the coolest work and the most beautiful design and da 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 but you know clients if you're really trying to build a, a business out of this clients yes they care about that but it's also you know what you know how are you going to impact the success of their business with your design what value are you providing and and how can you communicate that to your clients? Um, so there's that. And then also um, just getting out of your bubble. Because uh, uh, when we started out, we were very introverted. We still are introverted. We rarely go out. But we were a little too introverted. And we didn't really, um, we weren't aware of like what was going on in the community and city um, opportunities that were out there. So we thought there were none when in actuality, there were so many and so many great people doing great things that um, we eventually got to know and got to connect with. And that really helped expand our, our business and expand our, our, our network and our success. And so, yeah, that's another piece of advice uh, that I would give. Nice. Banda, what about you? No, I think that all sounds really wise. I think um, 
have some savings so that you have that cushion so you can choose yeah to try to avoid that spot where you're like I really don't want to but I gotta like do not go in that corner it's a sad corner to be in sometimes you gotta but I think it's nice to to have that option um because you know what's the point of going at it alone if it's not to be able to kind of be selective with who you work with or what type of projects you take on uh I like what you said about the bubble because I think it's so true I think that you kind of like can just fall down this rabbit hole of like your own thing and then you forget to come out for air and like you, I, I know I have a tendency to do that. Like I'll forget to come out and be like, hey, like let me be open to who I'm going to meet and where that's going to take me. So I think that's definitely a key thing. Um, I think also like remember that what you do is not who you are. <laughs> it's hard. So it's easy to forget that. Yeah. I think when you're going at it solo or, or on your own terms, um, that there has to be like, I don't believe in this whole work life balance probably because I can't figure it out but it's maybe more of a blend it's a blend right so but just kind of know kind of know that you get to take time off and you get to disconnect and sometimes you take time off so you can come back better and uh and yeah have fun if it's not fun don't do it yeah what we do is kind of amazing right we get to visualize ideas we get to make things out of nothing that's pretty cool yeah, yeah one, one of my friends told me something the other day and she's she's, she's a creative person she's like she has to remind herself that we're not saving lives okay. we're doing creative work so we don't have to take it so seriously all the time and that's what I started really applying because sometimes I'll be so stressful about these things I'm just like yo this is supposed to be fun yeah, right? yeah. creative it's work fun. we're very lucky that this is what yeah. we're doing we're not we're not driving a firefighter truck or whatever <laughs> and stuff like that like we're 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 very lucky to to, to be doing this so gotta yeah. remind ourselves that. it's true well thank you thank you to all of you for sharing a little a little bit of insight into what's going on in the montreal design scene i really appreciate it and it was nice to see you all thanks for, thanks for, having, us. Thanks for having us and our bird in the background. Yeah. That's what that is. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> Can't help it. Hey. Yeah. All right. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the meeting. You, you too. Bye.